Please keep it up. Keep existing. You do good stuff. You do bad stuff too, but on the whole, it's good, I think. I think it's good. I don't know. Right, I'm going to do another cow joke. I know, I just go on and on and on about these bloody cows, don't I? But, it's a nice little gag. One I found that I hadn't done, and it's an old one in my book, my creaky book. Um, so, right. Um, I work, I work. I'm, uh, I volunteer uh, on the parish council, and a lot of the times I have to do um, like planning things every now and again. Um, and this is based on uh, some of the things I, I have to do in the parish council, uh, which is just look at plans for buildings and things on the parish. La 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 la. Oh god, I'm tired. Oh, I had a good weekend. Hope you did. Oh. If you like this stuff and you want to see more, uh, you can visit my Patreon page, which is uh, which is Stick Tunes, Stick Tunes, and um, yeah, and for a dollar a month, uh, you can give me more if you like. I'll do. Well, you see, there's lots of I've put I've been putting stuff in there for about three months. So there's 400, over 400. Uh, jokes, not all cow jokes, uh, that will be released by your shiny dollar. And um, the more of you do that, the more of this stuff I can generate because this is no one pays me for this. <laughs> but if you enjoy it um, and you want me to do more, uh, then join my Patreon page. Uh, stick tunes, uh, and the, the dog will run past with it, and um, Nigel Farage will vomit it out uh, like a cuckoo clock. Um, so, uh, there it is. Yeah, I, said, I forgot. I said I wasn't going to do anything till next week. Well, the weekend, but I forgot that uh, I'm doing a job for um, an American publishing company. And they they're not they're not up yet, so um, I've got to wait for them to get back to me. So I thought I'd do another cow cartoon. Oh, there goes that's 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 Stick Tunes at Stick Tunes. Uh, that's my Twitter feed, but also Instagram, uh, and um, uh, I've got a T-shirt shop on Zazzle. That's the Stick Tunes as well. So yeah, just uh, just search for that, and you will find me. I will find you. That's a stupid film. Michael Mann is it Michael Mann? They say he's so intelligent, but he makes the dumbest films. Oh, it's a wolf. It represents the assassin. You know, it's like what really? Come on, Kubrick. He was a, he was a genius. Michael Mann might talk a good game. These films are tut. Really? Have you tried to watch Miami Vice? It's rubbish. Piece of sh oof. Anyway. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to. This cow is fairly um, inexpressive. Is that a word? And actually, I think the angle's slightly wrong, so I'm just going to move her head like this. Oh, God, I'm dead. Oh, sorry. Oh. Ah, oh, dear. Right. Yeah, I might have to make her a bit smaller, but I'll carry on drawing. Uh, this size. Uh, oh, that's quite deep. Wonder if I can do Tom Jones. When I have a sore throat, I can do a very good Tom Jones. Oh, that. Ooh, what was that? I knew Elvis, you know. No, that's not quite there. 
I bet you he's got a squeaky little voice. But yes, do. <laughs> Eats gravel in the morning. <laughs> Just gonna go and eat the gravel. <laughs> oh dear. Oh yeah. Then he comes like, oh, right, much better. <laughs> oh, good old Tom Jones. Love him. I have watched The Voice recently. I'm glad he's back. Right, okay, so. B. Yeah, that's alright. This cow is just fairly. Um, what's the word? Oh, sorry, vocabulary has left the building. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, trouble is, I don't talk to anyone. Ugh. I've taken up. Um, Badminton, and that's good because I actually sort of have to talk to people, which is a good thing. That's a problem sometimes, is being on your own. You know, I'm not on my own, I've got family and stuff, but what I'm saying is I work, I work on my own. And, um, yeah, I think you get a bit stir crazy because you don't, you don't talk to people. And when you actually get to, oh, open your gulf. Oh god, I'm sorry. Oh, terminal yawn syndrome. No, no, no that's fine. Um, it's nothing rude. I think not quite yet. Spell out something rude, but no. Um, yeah, you kind of forget how to talk. Of course, you know, kids are just ask you when the dinner's going to be ready and stuff, and. You get into this loop of the same bloody words all the time. Um, deadpan. That's the word I was looking for. This cow is deadpan. I think some of the funniest comedy can be from the lack of reaction. Jim Carrey, yeah? Listen. <laughs> no, I... Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? I, I loved at the time. I don't know. I haven't watched it for years, but um, Ace Ventura. I just thought was an amazing film at the time because this young comic. I mean, didn't really know him then. Um, just seemed so dangerous. Didn't know what he was going to do. Um, and of course, he followed that with Dumb and Dumber, where it was just fantastic. And actually, that's fairly subtle. That that scene where he's crying and almost being sick is hilarious I mean it's just so good um, but then he did um, well the mask I didn't like I thought that was just too much um, but then he did uh, Ace Ventura 2 Call of the Wild or whatever it's called and it sucks big time and I couldn't work out why I really couldn't work out why maybe because it was just like a caricature of the first one because it, it, it had subtleties it sort of rang it hit the right notes and I guess the second one he was just being an asshole <laughs> and it just yeah didn't play well I don't know it's funny how something that you think it's the same thing but it just isn't and it's really hard to put your finger on why that is. But I think once you lose the sympathy of the character, which I think Ace Ventura 2 did, then um, the comedy doesn't work. You've got to be, you've got to actually have the sympathy of the audience who are rooting for you. To a certain degree, I mean, it depends what the character is. Um, I mean, one of the funniest characters I thought was um, uh, the, sure, um, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Oh God, his name's just fallen out of my head. Uh, Alan Rickman. And he's, he's not sympathetic whatsoever, but you laugh at his frustration. God bless old Alan Rickman. What a guy. And I mean, he was 40 when he first hit the big time. So, uh, 
Well, I don't. I, actually, I, uh, I saw a thing, and I think Leonardo da Vinci was about forty. And that was old in those days, before he actually started sort of making any impression on anyone. Um, right, hang on a second. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll continue this. I, it might be a bit too big, but let's see. Do 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 Right. So yeah, so we have the cow here. I'm just gonna get rid of the cow for a second and do a board. So it's presenting. Planning. Lexu. It's nice. Nice shape. Oh god, I'm yawning again. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I think it might be as well. I'm fasting today, so unless I'm really stimulated, I think your body goes well. I need a deadline, you know. <sighs> right, okay. Started watching um, GBS, GBSS, which is Great Britain under the rule of Germany. So it's set in 1941 from the perspective, it's BBC, um, from the perspe perspective. Anyway. Yeah, that's right, perspective. <laughs> that sounds wrong. <laughs> perspective. Um, of a, well, a policeman, really. Like an inspector. And what I find very interesting, and I haven't watched all of it yet, but there's a gallows humour about it. The British uh, police officers are, are kind of just getting on with it and sort of having this laugh. There's a there's a humour in it. Now, you know what I'm going to say. Compare that to a uh, man in the high castle, and there's nothing there. They're all grim. They're all miserable. They're all angst-ridden. Their foreheads are knotted bits of steel where they're frowning so much. And people aren't like that. Just because, you know, shit's hit the fan, you don't all wander around moping. And consequently, I don't think you have any sympathy for any character, good or bad. Right? Where these characters that are being portrayed in this um, BBC, uh, you know, alternate universe, you like them because they're like, you know, having a laugh, and that's almost defiance in itself. You know, not going to let the bastards grind us down, and that's one of the. And I think, you know, I know um, Man in the Iron Castle, in the High Castle, is set in America. I'm pretty sure the Americans have a laugh. I know for a fact. <laughs> but I saw a thing about, uh, well, I think it was World at War. And they were talking about Iwo Jima, these, uh, these vets. And, I mean, Iwo Jima is one of the worst battles that has ever been fought by the American army. I mean, the whole Pacific campaign was brutal. Um, and they said, you know, they were, you know, blokes were blowing up. And I think, like, they were saying they were in this, um, this trench. And this guy blew up and his torso fell in their trench. And they said they had it, they just laughed about it. And I know that sounds terrible, but, you know, I, I think, if you don't laugh, you go mad. And I think, dramatically, if characters don't have that element of humour, just to make, you know, 
just to break the madness, I don't think you you don't read them. It's like the Uncanny Valley. You don't read their character as human. It's just a sort of thing. And if you watch um, Alien again, those guys, it's, they're all talking over each other and having a laugh, taking the piss out of each other. It's an incredible, incredible film. And it's because it's it's got humour. I mean, it, obviously they get a bit windy when the alien actually sort of kicks off big time. But it still laughs. And even, right, aliens, again, they have laughs. I'm not sure they laugh too much in Avatar, actually. But then that's not... That's not comedy, is it? Uh, <laughs> not horror, as such. Anyway. <sighs> so, you know, for God's sake, lighten up. Because I, I, I didn't love the book Man in the High Castle, but it was incredibly interesting. The sort of things it goes into. And Philip K. Dick was not a fun man. <laughs> he was eating cat food or dog food. He, he started going mad and calling himself horse lover fat. Um, and thinking people were out to kill him and stuff. Um, but, you know, come on. And I'm not saying have a goofball character to lighten it. Everyone needs to have... Well, not everyone. Because not everyone's that way inclined but a couple of characters at least cracker cracker smile <sighs> that's what made fortitude so good is every now and again they, they someone would do something just to do a little trick you know a little practical joke as you do a friend of mine um, he scared the, the willies out of his wife because she, um, I think they'd just seen Poltergeist or something. I mean, this was a while ago. And she went into the kitchen and all the chairs were on the, the floor. She went out the kitchen and he nipped in, put all the, stacked all the chairs up and left. <laughs> she walked back in like a minute later. And that freaked her out. That's, you know, come on. Right, anyway. Uh, so I think this needs to be smaller, but what I'll do, just in case I cock it up, I'm, I'll, I'll do another version. This, so I'll make it slightly smaller. That's probably okay. And... Yeah, so this... Um, hmm. I'll write it in blue. So, planning. I don't know whether, I mean this cow's written this, but maybe, I don't know. Mm. I mean my writing's fairly childlike anyway, so I was <laughs> Yeah. There's these signs um, on the, on the roads that drive carefully, it's written in sort of child handwriting. And I, you know, why? Just, it feels sort of patronizing to me. Oh, right, a child's written that, so therefore I need to pay attention. Just drive safely. Drive safely. Um, I'm driving safely anyway, you know. And you know that it's some bloody designer with red glasses and, you know, beard, beads, uh, sort of tartan plaid shirt, who's <laughs> written a bloody thing, <laughs> you know, it's not some kid doing it, and that, that just, you're like, oh, God's sake, you just hear them, you know, storyboarding it and pitching it to the client, and, oh, man, right, okay, and there's a there's a red X, red X. <laughs> there's a red X on the floor. And 
This is what cows have to do all the time. <laughs> okay, and there's a little fly. Little blue bottle. Blue bottle. Um, hell. Just make the point size of the brush a bit smaller. save this actually before I do anything else. So this is 19. So that's 19 uh, cow cartoons I've done. New ones recently. That's good isn't it? So he's there and I think what I'll do uh, I think that needs to move over slightly. I think he needs to put him on the same level. Yeah, let's move him over there. Yeah, I think the what I'll do is I'll do the grass without a line. So it just be like this boink. We think that's okay. And that there. Yeah, there's another instance of someone I want to be less successful so they can do things I like, which is Charlie Brooker. Can you fail at your Black Mirror, Charlie Brooker, and come back and do screen wipe every month or so? Because screen wipe is brilliant. It's terrible, isn't it? I think someone should clone him. He is so articulate and funny. And that's what I think I am. I think I'm that guy. I can say that. But, oh, you know, clearly, I can't. Um, I aspire to be Charlie Brooker. I think he's amazing. Um, he started off as a as a cartoonist as well. I think he was working. Uh, there was um, <laughs> there was a comic I was working on in the eight. Oh no, it must be nineties. Oh, no, it was the eighties. Yeah, called Brain Damage. <laughs> Terrible. We did some good stuff though, uh, but I think he worked on that as well. He did some cartoons on that. So I worked with Charlie Brooker. Slightly different, you know. He's done pretty well compared to me. I mean, I, you know, I'm surviving. Um, if you, you you want me to survive more, help me on Patreon. That'd be great. If you're a fan, uh, I'd love to chat to you. Um, but yeah, I've worked with Charlie Brooker. Uh, I did actually send him a letter. Well, I I didn't email him. I tweeted him, I think. He ignored me. <sighs> Never mind. Oh god, and I, I sent some cow cartoons to... Oh, who's the writer of Father Ted? And he just went, no. <laughs> oh, cheers. Yeah, thanks, man. Oh god. Ugh. Yeah. Still, Boy George follows me. So that's good. And Otis from Gadget Show follows me. <laughs> so I'm doing all right on Twitter. Um, okay. Mitch Ben. Big shout out to Mitch Ben, he follows me. So he should. I did a bloody free video for him. For his book. 
<sighs> right. Okay. Oh yeah, little black bit here. Right, not black, what am I talking about? Dark red. Um, yeah, and oh, there's a doggy. Hello doggy, that's my Twitter address, as I keep saying. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram, um, that's my Patreon page, it's all stick tunes. Stick tunes. Right, almost done. You can go in a minute. Uh, oh, er, um, yeah. I like little flares. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. So the fly. Oh, hang on a sec. Just it helps just pop the eyes onto the head. This gives it a bit of dimension. Dimensionality. <laughs> That's not a word. That's not a word. There we go. Okay. Basically, the fly is saying that's oops. That's that is. That's acceptable. Is that how you spell acceptable? That's acceptable. Except. There's a T there, surely. Acceptable. I'll check that out. Misspelling acceptable is not acceptable. <laughs> um, oh, I'm going a bit mad, sorry. Oh, God. Right. Uh, I think that needs to be a bit bigger. This, uh, I'll just transform it a little bit. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. Right. Okay, yeah, so if you want to see me do more of these, or, you know, you enjoy my work, please support me. It'd be lovely to, because, uh, you know, I try and talk to my followers on Patreon. Um, I've got eight at the moment. Uh, I'd like to have about 3,000. <laughs> it would be nice. But yeah, if I had 3,000 or, you know, a dollar, I would be able to do this all day. Okay? Just making up silly stuff uh, to make people laugh. And we need more laughter. I think we can agree on that one. Not sort of crazed laughter we have laughing at what's going on in America and the world at the moment. Just, just more laughter. Um, yeah. So, if you want, if you're a fan and you want me to do more of these, then um, you know, you know what to do. Go over to my Patreon site and um, one dollar a month. <laughs> That's it. Very, you know, small amount of money. You can do more, and you get there's some gifts and things if you do two dollars, uh, and you provide me with like a um, uh, a profile picture. I'll put a cow in there. I think there's ten dollars. I'll put you. I'll do a little uh, when I do my next comic. I've got a comic out. Anyway, I'll I'll thank you in my my next comic. The next. Um, Robonauts comic. Go and have a look. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the cartoon and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Cheers then.